So you open up Terraria and get to work on creating a new character. You encounter these four options, Journey, Classic, Medium Core, and Hardcore. Someone who's new to the game might choose Medium Core since it sounds similar to Minecraft, and a veteran may see it and decide that they'll do it for a little added challenge. After playing the game for nearly 10 years, I've never been brave enough to choose this option. But now I've done it, so you don't have to. And by the end of this video, I will convince you that Medium Core is actually much more difficult than Hardcore. Now several of my viewers know that I defeated Terraria in Hardcore Expert Mode about half a year ago. So I upped the difficulty in this run to Master so that way I wouldn't be able to do another Deathless run and make the Medium Core difficulty meaningless. I also decided I would defeat every single boss in the game just to make it that much more difficult. I started off with a classic chomping down of trees and booked it to the left side of the world to see what was in store for me and of course there was a corruption biome right next door which was wonderful. There wasn't a natural cave either so I figured I'd check out the right side of the world since there's always a natural cave near spawn on large worlds, right? But then I came across a desert with no tunnel in sight and I knew I was in for something truly special for this run. Not only was the difficulty plotting against me, but so was the world generation. I did gather some cactus, but the vulture and antlion kept me from going any further. The thing is, at this point in progression, dying wouldn't be that big a deal, since I wouldn't lose that much, but that won't be the case for very long. Early game and early hard mode are going to prove rather tricky, since dying during either of these times will make further progression much harder. If you don't know, in medium core, you drop everything when you die and respawn with only the starter equipment, a copper short sword, pickaxe, and axe. These tools can help you get by with the simplest of enemies and tasks in pre-hard mode, which will help you get the ball rolling a little bit, but that won't be the case in hard mode. But I get ahead of myself. For now, I had to worry about what I was going to do without a natural tunnel. And of course, the only thing I could think of doing was mining straight down until I found something. It took a little while, but I came across a minecart track, and nearby was my very first charger chest of the run. Inside was a cloud in a bottle, which was a really nice change of pace after such bad world gen on the surface. This was a big help in making some early progression. I mined some ores along the path and got my first heart crystal of the run before returning home. Before heading back into the cave, I placed down some rope. I could have used the cloud in a bottle to break my fall, but if I ever died, then I wouldn't have my cloud in a bottle. And I would also likely not have my rope anymore since I always keep it on me in early game. So taking precautions like this will make retrieving my gear in the future much easier. This is something I'll end up failing to do later in the run. And if you decide to try medium core, just remember at all times, baby proof your world, so to speak. Remember, you will have nothing, especially in the early game, so make it easy for that character with nothing to get your stuff back. I mined down a bit more since I was all out of cave and a yellow slime conducted a sneak attack, resulting in my first death of the run. Now, I hadn't been placing rope down as I mined the new hole, and I forgot about that fact on my first attempt at retrieval and ended up falling to my death. Afterwards, I grabbed some wood so I could make platforms to break my fall, though I guess I could have just mined downwards on one block, but whatever, I got my stuff back. This early in the run with such terrible world gen and early death is inevitable. Had this been hardcore, I would have just made another world at this point, but in medium core, I'm sticking to whatever I'm given, for better or for worse. Exploring a little more underground, I found another cloud in a bottle, which you might think is bad, but it's actually really great since having a backup cloud in a bottle is very, very helpful. I also got a magic mirror and a gravitation potion. In my hardcore run, I used an early gravitation potion to get a lucky horseshoe very soon into the run and tried to do the same thing here, but only managed to find one island with a celestial magnet, which won't be helpful at all unless I do a mage build. But even if I was doing a mage build, this was the worst find I could have asked for from the Sky Island. I also almost died to a zombie of all things up there, and that would have been terrible and maybe have made it almost impossible to get my stuff back because building up there would result in probably a lot of harpy spawning. I spent a while underground after that trying to find some treasure and gather gold and only managed to find gold somehow, it was oddly plentiful. For whatever reason, I hadn't crafted any armor at this point and I thought that going to the corruption to blow up an orb for a musket was a brilliant idea. I have no idea why I thought this was a good idea. And after falling down the wrong hole twice and having to use my magic mirror to escape since I was low on rope, 
I still didn't learn my lesson as I approached what I think was actually the right hole, but then I experienced my second death roughly midway into the biome. And I guess not technically my second death, but uh, second death when I had my good gear. Keep in mind, I haven't really built up a backup build at this point. All I had was an extra cloud in a bottle, which miraculously was actually enough to get my stuff back. That experience told me I needed more ores so I could be ready for another experience just like that. But while I was mining some lead underground, I failed to see a bat flying around and died again. On the return trip, I forgot to bring anything but my backup cloud in the bottle and that wasn't enough to get up to where I needed to be. And as I mined some blocks, a Shelly took me out. Now I was out of my only real backup as well. This is rather early and I could still recover even if I need to redo a lot of the beginning things, but perhaps you're picking up on why medium core is as difficult as I claim it to be. Unless you really put some care into crafting a backup loadout, you can easily get stuck in a death loop. Thankfully on the return trip I realized there was actually a much easier way to get my stuff back, but then on my way to pick up my extra cloud in a bottle, a piranha I didn't see sent me back to square one once again. And after a minor setback, I finally got that stuff for good this time. I tried braving the corruption again, but after fleeing twice, I remembered that having armor is a good idea. And cactus armor is nice for its thorns effect. So after grabbing some cactus armor, I thought I'd be capable of taking out an orb, but ended up taking myself out instead. On the return trip, I died just short of the hole that I had died in previously, and after I managed to get that backup cloud in a bottle, I forgot where I had died, somehow, and died <laughs> once again. <laughs> It took a little while, but I got my things and blew up an orb, which may have been the dumbest thing I could have done since now the goblin army can spawn, and I fully understood this as I blew it up and said these famous last words. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, guys. Now we got some firepower. That firepower was enough, however, to get me past the desert to the right, where I found a desert pyramid with a magic carpet, and further on were eight living trees with, unfortunately, only one finch staff. But still, eight living trees and a desert pyramid was a good find. Perhaps the spawn area had bad world gen, but maybe other places in the world were abundant in treasure. Even if I only got one finch staff, the other chests from the living trees gave me all kinds of basic materials to work with. Back home, I prepped an area for storage, which is something I'll do rather poorly in this run, which is definitely not how you want to do a run like this. In medium core, stay organized, or you'll seriously regret it at some point. I found a bit more gold underground and another magic mirror, which is another thing I wouldn't have thought would be useful. Having a way to teleport home after losing your stuff is incredibly important. Dying once is bad enough, but dying with your backup gear is even worse, since now you're down two loadouts. A means of escape is vitally important. Of course, this is something I had to learn the hard way. It wouldn't be so soon though that I would learn this lesson. I did die to a jellyfish that broke the laws of physics soon after, but I managed to grab my things without a problem this time. I think I should also mention at this point that one of the worst parts of medium core is reorganizing your inventory and loadout after gathering your things. We all have a particular way we like to keep our stuff and you have to redo this from scratch each time you die. This can even cause your death occasionally if you get caught up in reorganizing and fail to pay attention to your surroundings, or even if you dash into it and then you didn't bring a recall potion or magic mirror like I always did, and then you had to scramble to try and find where it was in your inventory. I explored for quite a bit more underground and started to organize myself just a little bit before making my way to the right side of the world. It turned out just beyond the living trees is the jungle, and I thought that with an enchanted boomerang, golden armor, and a musket with limited ammo, that I would be pretty much fine to do a little bit of jungle exploration. This was, of course, the single worst mistake I could have made. As I was in the jungle, the goblin army started to approach, and that split-second distraction of seeing the text appear was just enough time for a jungle bat to get past my defenses and kill me. This means I have now lost all of my good equipment on the other side of the world with a moderately difficult event about to spawn at any second. I would respawn with nothing but starter gear, which is entirely incapable of handling this event. Now I still had the cactus armor and a backup enchanted boomerang, which isn't awful, but it's hardly ideal for traversing the jungle. 
And remember that organization thing I mentioned earlier, as well as how blowing up an orb was a terrible decision? Well, both of these awful lapses in judgment culminated in the pickle I would soon find myself in. See, I knew cactus armor and a boomerang wouldn't be enough for the jungle, so I spent almost a solid minute trying to find something to aid in my journey. This is another thing you should remember. Make a treasure chest right next to spawn that has your entire backup loadout in it, so you can quickly and easily access it. Do that or you will be stuck in this situation I found myself in, because after a minute of trying to find my stuff, I realized I was taking way too much time and tried to flee, but was far too late. The goblin army arrived and I was woefully unprepared. The next 40 or so minutes were spent pitifully chipping away at the goblin army until it was at last defeated. This was the first sign that medium core could very well be much more difficult than hardcore. At least in hardcore if you die, you're done with it. But in medium core, if you died in an event like this or die on the other side of the world as an event spawns, you could be entirely screwed if you're not properly prepared. Events are by far the scariest part of this run because they don't go away by saving or quitting, waiting them out, or by not returning home. The only way to get out of an event like this is to kill enough enemies. And as these events get harder, all it would take is a bad series of events for me to get soft locked. By that, I mean that I can no longer make progress through the game, and not because I'm dead and literally can't, but because there is not a way for me to escape the situation I'm stuck in. Hardcore is frustration for a moment, while medium core is frustration for hours, as you strain your brain for ways to get out of a nasty situation. And really, one of the greatest threats in medium core is the fact that it's medium core. I did not approach this challenge with half of the caution I approached hardcore, even after realizing how terribly difficult it would be if I lost my stuff. The only reason for this is the fact that it's medium core. I don't technically have to play perfectly since I will technically respawn. It took me until well into hard mode to really start to wrap my mind around this and comprehend the fact that dying here was arguably even worse than dying in hardcore. But I'm not in hard mode yet, so I went to the jungle to get my stuff, returned home and reorganized, and then had the audacity to return to the jungle and start searching underground just to deservedly die soon after. I perished once again on the return trip, and on the third attempt, the Aya Cthulhu spawned after making the long trip to the jungle. Now this third loadout was barely a loadout at all, and I knew that dying would spell certain doom for the run, so I fled home. Proof that backup ways to return home is essential. But this still meant I had to make the slow journey back to the jungle, where I just barely snagged my stuff. Now when you die in two separate times with two loadouts, it can be tricky collecting your gear since you don't have time to spend sorting through it all, but you also have to in order to pick up your gear on the ground. Building a box around myself was the only way I could start sorting through the two loadouts, but building a box next to where you died is not always an option. So in a way, if you think you're going to die, move yourself to a good death location so it won't be that bad. Just beyond my little safe box were two golden treasure chests right next to each other, which is sketchy as all get out. And I debated for a hot second whether or not they were trapped. Even after carefully examining the surroundings for traps and confirming that there were none, I still did not feel safe opening them. But I did anyways, and got shoe spikes and a magic mirror, which is fine, I guess. Just like in a normal run, getting duplicates isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but in medium core, they are still extraordinarily helpful, just not exciting. I kept exploring the jungle a bit and got an anklet to win, but held on to it for only a few seconds as I died to a man-eater. Now I had to get all my stuff while it's even deeper in the jungle than last time. Hey. <laughs> I still don't have much in the way of back of equipment, but I knew I had to bring the best I had, and that wasn't much. Now I got pretty close to myself once again, but I had forgotten to bring rope, and I didn't have any method of breaking my fall. A few hornets were also shooting at me, so I was in a bit of a pickle. But then I remembered one of the accessories I had, and proceeded to pull this daring maneuver. Oh, oh right, I have the climbing claws, hold up. <laughs> So sorry, that was so that was so loud. I'm so, don't, no, 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 no. 
I have looked at this clip so many times and I can't figure out what I was doing. I saved myself and then immediately <laughs> jumped to my doom. <laughs> My best guess is that the fight made my adrenaline start pumping and I forgot I couldn't break my fall in the open air with shoe spikes. I really have no idea. All I know is now I've lost my secondary loadout again in the jungle. I had almost no options at this point. I suppose I could have started from scratch again, but that would take forever. So I decided to give it another go with an enchanted boomerang and cactus armor. No accessories, no weapons, that was all. Well, except for, I guess, a spear. But other than that, I was on my last legs. I played super cautiously, and mob spawns were unusually common. But I got into the jungle and reached the same spot as before, such a short distance from my stuff. Can't die a third time in the same place, guys. That's not allowed, okay? It is not allowed. I was being cautious, but the mob spawns were not my friend. I almost got the platform far enough out to be able to jump and get my backup gear, but a hornet pushed me back. The poison was going to last too long. There was no way I could survive, but I still had platforms that I could turn back into wood and then combine with torches to make a campfire. Maybe I could bring my regen just high enough to- Was I crying? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> but my heart was on fire. I had to conquer this challenge, and starting from square one simply wasn't going to be enough. I had one more spear and just enough ore to craft a silver chest plate and tin leggings. For what they're worth. Also, I said leggings. <laughs> I brought along health potions for the first time. Are, are, you, are you proud of me? I I remembered health potions this, this time. <laughs> I had a lead bow and some wood and I just have to find a way to make it work. On my journey back to the jungle, I want to remind you that we're shooting for 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I'll be throwing one stick of dynamite for every subscriber I have at year's end. So if you enjoy the content, claim your stick of dynamite today. I returned to the jungle. I made my way back to the same spot I've died in three times before. But this time, before jumping down there, I had what may have been the biggest brain moment I've had in my entire life. I didn't have an easy way down other than platforms, but my last death taught me that that method was far too slow. But as would happen, there was a pool of water just above the hole, and if I drained it, I could ride the water down like some sort of slip and slide, breaking my fall while also being fast enough to avoid enemies. It would also give me some blocks to work with. Maybe it was a long shot, but it was all I got. And sure enough, I grabbed one and then two of my previous loadouts before boxing myself in, leaving only my best and most powerful gear a short distance away. I could have rushed over there, but I wanted to organize and make sure I could grab it all quickly and safely. Thankfully, the mobs left me alone this time and I got everything back. Had I died again, I would legitimately have had to start all over again, at least until I could get myself to a point where I could return and get my things, which would have likely taken many, many hours after having stripped away all the easy stuff to get. I went home, one death having spiraled into an hour-long journey of recovery. I did get some more gravitation potions and looted several more sky islands for all the gear that you can get from them. Several long journeys to the jungle also reminded me I should start getting a pylon network set up, so I built a shoebox in the desert, but was not interested in waiting around for night for them to move in and return to the jungle. Again. Yeah, apparently I don't learn. <laughs> but I guess this time I, I didn't die. I actually found the Goblin Tinker too, which I know is usually kind of an exciting thing. It, it's really helpful, but in medium core, it means so much more. Now, so long as I kept enough money in the piggy bank, I could always buy rocket boots to give any loadout a method of breaking their fall as well as limited flight. It is really a massive game changer. Not only that, but I collected enough stingers and spores to make not one, but two blades of grass for that all important backup. And at this point, it's finally time to fight our first boss. Yeah, we're quite a ways in and haven't beaten a single one. Now bosses I honestly think are not the biggest concern in hardcore or medium core. In hardcore, you're hyper focused when fighting bosses, heavily prepared so you do better against them, while average mobs you don't take nearly as seriously, resulting in you dying. 
Same goes in medium core, but bosses are even less of a problem in medium core than hardcore because if you die, you just need some basic equipment so you can retrieve the stuff that you have in an arena that's probably relatively safe to navigate. So in this way, medium core isn't that bad, but I think all the non-boss moments make up for it in spades. Now I got the slimy saddle from the first King Slime I beat, so that was all I really wanted or needed, which is kind of dumb to say now that I think about it since a backup slimy saddle would have been great to have, but it's not really necessary I guess, so it's fine. I then made this sorry excuse for an arena and took down the eye. I spent the next 30 to 40 minutes searching for the shimmer, but to no avail. I almost never have a very hard time finding it, it's usually pretty easy for me. The only issue is when it spawns in the jungle, like deeper into the jungle, which isn't that common in large worlds and I haven't encountered it at all in a normal run that I've been doing, but it does happen and it would appear that this is one of those instances. World Gen strikes again! I took a break from searching since I wasn't particularly desperate to find it and I added a few more houses for NPCs before heading to the corruption to take down the Eater of Worlds. I had forgot to bring some potions along, which I don't usually use, but I usually play expert mode, so I thought potions would be a good idea. The fight was teetering on a razor's edge for most of the battle. Ah! No, 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 no. This may have been the most strategically I've ever maneuvered myself during an Eater of Worlds fight. I don't often lose to this boss, but in expert mode he is considerably easier, so this turned into quite the duel that ended in my victory. Thing is though, I only got enough scales and demonite to make the chest plate and helm. Since when was this a thing? I didn't even make the demonite pickaxe or anything else for that matter. That's nothing! I never have to fight the worm more than once to get all the gear I need. Does master mode decrease the amount of stuff you get? Am I... Am I delusional? Am I misremembering? I don't know. But whatever the reason, I needed to beat the big worm again, so I did that. Now that I had full shadow armor, I started making my way to where the dungeon should be on the left side of the world, but return home since I thought that making a bed out there would be a good idea. If I died to Skeletron, I didn't want to have to walk all the way back like I did with the jungle. So I made those beds and when I finished my arena at the dungeon, it was early day and like an idiot, I waited around doing nothing for a solid 5 minutes before remembering I brought a bed and you can sleep in beds to make time go faster. The Skeletron fight however went terribly, I haven't lost a Skeletron in a while so this was more a blow to my pride than my sanity, though I also wasn't using my go to strategy either so I left the dungeon to hunt for a meteor that landed a bit earlier. I think the space gun with meteor armor set is one of the simplest, lowest maintenance ways to reliably defeat Skeletron, and I'll often switch to it just for this fight because I think it makes it pretty easy so long as you're able to do some basic dodging. And of course I did much better at that dodging thing the second time and took down Skeletron, and before I go into the dungeon, I wanted to quickly backtrack and mention that it took me almost a half hour to find the meteor because it fell into a hole in the jungle. I was looking high and low for this thing for far too long. <laughs> this, this run hates me. As for the dungeon, I got all the dungeon things and did all the dungeon things and returned home without dying. Now it was time to get to work on fighting the wall of fresh. I hadn't even mined a elevator at this point, so after buying a bunch of dynamite, I blew my way down to the underworld and got to work. With the whole process, I killed three birds with one stone. I made the bridge and along the way picked up Hellstone and Shadow Chest loot, and then that also allowed me to make the Knight's Edge. After a bit of progress had been made, I remembered there were a few things I still had to finish first. I still hadn't found the Shimmer, and I haven't beaten Queen Bee or Deerclops yet. I could technically get a bunch of hard mode gear and then beat them really easily and technically fulfill the every boss requirement, but I wanted to fight them at least somewhere close to where they were in progression since that was more in the spirit of the challenge. I built a jungle house so I could get a jungle pylon set up and resume my search for the shimmer, moving my search further from the ocean and deeper into the jungle. It wasn't long before I finally found the shimmer and threw my heart crystal and mana star in there for permanent buffs that you get from them, though I never really used the mana at, at all. There was also a beehive with a large open space next door to the shimmer so I figured I might as well just open up that area and fight Queen Bee. Since I was already a bit stronger than I needed to be, I only did minimal prep, fought and beat Queen Bee. Next up is Deerclops, but I thought I might as well take a moment to find some ice skates. At the very least, I could make some Frostbark boots, but I hadn't found any water walking boots yet. And I've searched all of the obvious places you usually find water walking boots. 
So I'm not sure Terrorsburg boots will be achievable unless I do a bit of grinding later. Now, Deerclops has always been a bit of an annoying boss, and he's pretty tough, all things considered. He turns invincible if you so much as take two steps away from him, so you're stuck with very little margin of error. And since he doesn't despawn, it sure seems they balanced him with that in mind. In a regular run, this wouldn't be too much of a problem. You could cheese him with a bed set up nearby, but since this is medium core, one death could be catastrophic, since I'd have to contend with Deerclops guarding my loot. Granted, he will die automatically after I think a 24 hour in game cycle, which means I could get the stuff back eventually, but I don't want to wait for that. I'm also unsure if I've ever beaten Deerclops first try on tier without dying, and I was hoping this would be the first time, and unfortunately, it was not. If this had been expert, then it probably would have, though, but this is master, and now I'm in a bit of a pinch. I grabbed some basic gear and headed on over, but I made a grave miscalculation. I forgot to bring a grappling hook, and since Deerclops is faster than me and can debuff me with slowness, and there was a body of water in the way, I didn't stand a chance and died quickly. On the next trip, I didn't have good armor, but I brought a Sun Fury so I could at least deal some damage and maybe kill him since he is low on health. I also remembered I had flippers, which allowed me to skip along the surface of the lake while Deerclops sunk to the bottom. This and the grappling hook I remember to bring this time allowed me to slip past him, grab my stuff, and put an end to the menace. I gathered a bit more Hellstone after that and made my two backup sets of Hellstone armor with a little bit of Hellstone left over in case I needed to craft something in desperation. Since it was night, I also farmed three Eyes of Cthulhu so I could get the shield for my backup loadouts as well. Now, I could have sworn I grabbed one before, but Apparently, I didn't have a bewitching table, so I went to the dungeon and grabbed that, and now it was finally time for the Wall of Fresh fight, at least after I extended my hell bridge a bit more. Keep in mind, once the wall is beaten, hard mode will activate, and we'll once again be put in a precarious situation. If the pirates spawn early, then I could legitimately get softlocked, and since all the enemies will be much stronger, as well as it's much more possible for me to lose my stuff somewhere and not be able to get it back, it'll be very very dangerous, but I guess I won't have to worry about that right now since I lost to the wall of fresh when it had 62 health left. Oh, so help me. But I had another voodoo doll, so I fought the wall of fresh again, and this is very much the moment I started to lose my sanity a little bit. Oh no. No, 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 no. No, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, A goblin army spawns soon after that defeat though, so perhaps it's a good thing that I lost since a hard mode goblin army wouldn't have been a whole lot of fun. At this stage, I was able to bully them into submission. Now, I didn't have any more voodoo dolls, so I made a house in the underworld and moved the guide in. Though, it was midday when I finished, and I forgot once again that beds were a thing, so I stood around like an idiot for a while, and then plunged the guide into the lava for the third wall of fresh fight. And this time, we came just as close to losing, but managed to clinch the victory. I immediately broke the demon altars and started working on mining. I had to get these ores and get them fast, so I could have proper hard mode equipment, including backup equipment. Though the usual grind for ores was much longer, or at least it should have been. After getting a single set of titanium, I decided to make a detour and collect some dark shards for an onyx blaster. At the moment, I only had cobalt as a backup in the event that I died. Thankfully though, I've been on the top of my game today, and I haven't died ever since I entered hard mode. Once I got the shards, I farmed for the souls I needed to get myself the one and only onyx blaster. But now I had to return to farming since I decided I'd run a ranger build and I wanted to get a dart rifle. Getting Souls of Night would let me craft Shadow Keys, and then that let me summon Corrupt Mimics on command. Only problem is that I died shortly after I started farming. I died close to the Underworld though, and the Underworld doesn't enter hard mode till after the mechs are all down, so I went with my Cobalt Armor and Sun Fury, but once again forgot to bring healing and recall potions, and I died once again, a very short distance from my stuff. This has been an obnoxiously common occurrence. If if you haven't noticed. With a little finessing and remembering to bring potions, I managed to get my gear back once again. I also decided to mine for some hard mode ores for the sake of those backup loadouts, and since I had been so focused on the ores, I hadn't even gotten wings yet, so after killing pixies for an entire day cycle, I slew a few wyverns and got my pixie wings. 
I also did kill some extra wyverns so I'd have souls of flight to make wings later on. I farmed for souls of night once again and opened up the area a bit with dynamite so I could more easily fight the enemies and after two corrupt mimics I got my hands on a dart rifle and a clinger staff. I figured I might as well try one of the mechs at this point despite not being very well geared for it but I got a mech guy from a mob earlier and I figured I'd take a crack at it and sure enough I lost pretty miserably. But Queen Slime was definitely within reason, so I made an arena in the hollow biome, lost the first fight, and then won the second one. Now, I don't know what possessed me to do this, but I fought the twins once again and lost, miserably, once again. I was partially determined to beat the mechs in a different order than I normally do, just to spice things up a little bit. I put out a poll not long ago seeing which one you guys fight first and destroy one out by a landslide for obvious reasons and the twins were in a distant second. I always fight the worm first, but I thought I'd aim to defeat one of the other two first this time in instead. At this point, I thought getting a Philosopher's Stone would be a good place to start getting a little more power for that reduced um, healing potion cooldown. There's a little bit of an open area I was going to clear out even more for a sort of farm, but then a hollowed mimic was in my way and killed me along the path, and I struggled for the next half hour trying to get everything back. I did eventually blow up that open space, but nothing was spawning. I've mentioned in previous videos that I don't like farms, so I don't ever make them, and I'm not entirely sure how to make a good one. So I ended up abandoning the project, deciding I'd just live without a Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, yeah, no problem. The pirate stomped on by, so I locked myself in my house with blocks placed in front of the doors and used crystal darts with my dart rifle to clear the invasion. When night came, I took on the twins once again and lost. Not sure how I could get some more power at the moment, I turned to Queen Slime once again. Figuring a blade staff would be better than my imps and maybe that would help me beat the twins? But Queen Slime dropped the exact same thing as last time, so no blade staff. I do have a backup hook of dissonance now though, which is nice. But I was pretty sure I was at a high enough tier to take down at least one mech, so I turned my sights on Skeletron Prime, the one that almost nobody fights first apparently. And this decision turned out to be the best decision I could have made, because I took him down first try. Now I just had to farm him for enough hollow bars for an armor set. Also, the flamethrower is amazing, highly underrated weapon in my opinion. This thing is spectacular, and I'll be holding on to it until the end of the game. Though it may have made me feel a little too confident since I took on the destroyer and died before I even got it to half health. However, I did learn that the flamethrower absolutely melts the destroyer's probes. Pun intended. Now at this point, I grinded out another hour of gameplay, but OBS decided to be uncooperative and it lost all my footage for me. So in summary, I beat the destroyer with my flamethrower and dart rifle with cursed darts, gathered some life fruit, and managed to farm out a blessed apple. So now only the twins were left. So I fought them again and lost again, <laughs> but it was still night. So I summoned them another time and took down Spaz, leaving only Rhett, who was about to go into the second form when he started flying pretty high. Oh, it's day. We were doing a good job. No, come back. Oh, I wasted the spotter. Well, I could sleep until the next night to fight the twins again, but I figured that since I've been struggling, I might as well use the time to collect some life fruit since I'll be doing that anyways before fighting Plantera. Only problem is that I died along the way above a pool of water. And remember how I talked earlier about trying to die strategically, so to speak? My stuff fell at various depths in the deep pool of water in the jungle. And of course, these things are always filled with loads of hard mode fish. At least this time though, I took the whole retrieval process pretty seriously, and although I had to hide myself in a box a few times, I managed to get my stuff back. At this point, I've probably spent two or three hours, maybe even more, doing nothing but just trying to get my stuff back, which has been brutal. Anyways, time to die to the twins again. No! <laughs> Why can't I beat this? I can't beat it! <laughs> Why can't I beat it? I don't understand. Now this whole time I hadn't made the Mega Shark yet since I was pretty happy with the dart rifle and flamethrower, but now I was getting a bit desperate and farmed the shark fins I needed for the Mega Shark before facing the twins once more. Or at least that's what I'd like to say, but as I slept for the next night, a solar eclipse interrupted me and, well, you can't sleep through events like solar eclipses. A solar eclipse? No! 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 Stay away! No! This is so... 
Don't open the door. Oh, I was really hoping they couldn't open the door, but of course they can. Why? You don't drop. No! No, my pylon! No! Oh, no. They, that guy does damage. Ah! Oh, right, vampires. They do a lot of damage. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop! Stop! I did manage to get back to the house and put some blocks by the door so nothing could get in, but I still had to wait out the whole thing. Plus, there wasn't anything useful that the Eclipse could drop at the moment since I hadn't beaten all the mechs yet. Anyways, now that it's night, time to lose to the twins again. And yeah, that's a whole lot of L's I've been taking to the twins. I honestly was about to lose my mind. I couldn't wrap my head around why I was losing so often. But after I got my stuff back, I was putting away my backup loadout when I had an idea. For all these fights, I only had the flying power of my Frostbark boots and pixie wings but my backup loadout also had a horseshoe balloon. And I thought that maybe if I had just that little bit of extra horizontal movement, I'd be able to beat the twins. And as it would turn out, that was all I needed. Beforehand, I only had enough flight time to get past Retinazer's fast shooting lasers if I started on the ground when it started shooting, which is very hard to time. But now I had that little bit of extra spring in my step and was finally able to put the mechs behind me. Next up was the Chlorophyte Mining Montage. I also maxed out my health and accidentally spawned Queen Bee. And of course, once I got full set of Chlorophyte, I had to go back and mine for a second set in the events of my inevitable death. I expanded the Queen Bee Arena so it was more suitable for a Plantera fight, and I never once even bothered to check if there was a bulb nearby with which I could summon the plant, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And it did actually turn out to be fine. <laughs> I got you there, didn't I? Because I did actually find a bowl not too far away. So I mined out a clear path back to the arena, reforged some of my gear, grabbed my potions, and was off to take down the pretty pink plant. During my hardcore run, Plantera turned out to be one of the easiest bosses of the run, but I wasn't sure if that would translate over to master mode. And the thing is, I think it did. I do think Plantera was still pretty easy, but I lost the first fight anyways. Let me explain. I did an absolutely horrendous job on the first fight doing this thing called dodging. <laughs> I was one hit from death before Plantera was even in her second form. I held in there for a bit, but there was simply no way to recover without no hitting the thing, and I'm not good enough for that. I also didn't have an Ankh shield for poison immunity, and I figured that would probably be pretty helpful. And all I needed at this point was another vitamins, and then I could shimmer a bunch of the duplicates I had and get the Ankh. Boy, do I love 1.4.4. I made the arena just a little taller and managed to find another bulb close to the arena, and this time I took her down without even falling below half my health, just to show that she isn't that difficult. I just had a major case of skill issue in the last fight. Now it's golem time, but the naturally generated arena was a pretty bad one. And during the first fight, I was struggling with my severe case of skill issue once again. So I fled the battle since I don't want to go through the pain of retrieving my lost gear in the jungle temple. Instead of trying again and hoping for a different result, I went to the dungeon to get master ninja gear and the tactical shotgun. I also, get this, just so happened to get a desert key, a jungle key, and a hollowed key while casually minding my own business in this world. I never even tried to get them. And I got all three of those keys, which is stupid. <laughs> even if the world gen sucks, I guess I got the biome keys. So now I had the piranha gun and the desert tiger, though I just ignored the rainbow gun since it's simply not worth it. I personally am a believer in the piranha gun, but it wasn't until this run that I discovered how much I loved the flamethrower and it was frankly just better. Prana gun has more specific use cases. With this better gear, I took down Golem and thought I had finally conquered this ailment of skill issue, but this was only the beginning. Duke Fishron is my opponent now, and he was going to prove even more difficult than expected. His final form is the biggest threat of the entire fight in master mode. The added health or extra time he spends in the form can be felt in your soul. I came really close to first trying him, but wasn't able to quite pull it off. It was night at this point, so I figured I might as well fight Empress of Light, who I legitimately have fought maybe one time in a non-journey world, and it was with a character who had post-Moon Lord equipment. And I guess I also fought her one time with the same character in daytime, but that was also back when the dodges worked, so 
that sucks. I didn't really expect to win the fight, but I wanted to see how well I would do, and it wasn't a horrible performance, but I clearly wasn't ready, so I returned to Duke Fishron with a slightly different strategy. I replaced my Ranger's Emblem with a Spore Sack. I recently saw Gungear's Pacifist Run video, and I know the Spore Sack, according to other YouTubers as well, is kind of underrated, and I thought it was pretty good while I was navigating the caves, so I decided to give it a shot, and I even remembered to actually add walls to the arena so the spores could actually spawn. I lost the fight, but I had a DPS meter on hand and was dealing a little more damage. Not a lot, but at least more. I summoned him again, and you might be wondering why I'm using Chlorified Armor instead of Shroomite at this point. Personally, I think Chlorified Armor is better, since the auto cannon on my head does considerable damage, has good range, and is relatively fast. I think the auto cannon overcomes the damage output increase of Shroomite Armor. Maybe I'm wrong, and I know Shroomite also gives you more defense, but I'm sticking to my Chlorified. Maybe one of those Terraria Facts YouTubers can make a video showing how wrong or how right I am, but I always thought my Armor's set bonus was basically useless, at least in a single player world. In multiplayer, you can actually stand still and it can work, but in single player, standing still for an extra damage boost is not a thing. <laughs> at least not in combat. Anyways, I lost the battle. I needed more potions at this point, primarily endurance ones, but I ended up getting 5 prismite and 2 cavefish. Not sure how that happens, but I ain't complaining since prismite can be used to craft life force potions and up my max health to 600 instead of 500. I sure thought that'd be enough, but I lost once again. But I took a break from Duke and fought Empress, which was a mistake. At this point, I was just desperate for anything that increased my damage output, so I killed Plantera for a Venus Magnum since it's actually better than the Mega Shark. I also hadn't gotten a sniper scope last time I visited the dungeon, and that's because not one sniper spawned. I went back to farm for one, but could only find one really small section of the dungeon where they could actually spawn, at least more frequently. I was going to give up when, like, the second sniper who appeared dropped a scope, and I thank god for that one. It was all modest gains, but it had to be enough to defeat Duke Fishron. Or not. I was legitimately about to go crazy trying to figure out why I couldn't win. I broke down and built a glowing mushroom field above ground so I could get the truffle and shroomite armor thinking maybe all the other people are right about that or something. Once I got the armor however, my performance didn't improve even a little bit. Unsure as what to do at this point, I fought the cultist giving up entirely on beating Fishron or Empress in the proper order and of course I took down the cultist first try, easily. I then took down the nebula and vortex pillars, not sure why I bothered with the nebula one, but I crafted the vortex beater with the vortex pillar fragments, whatever. Now, I've always kind of liked the pillars, I think they're kind of cool, but my goodness, in master mode, these things are an absolute menace! They took forever, and I could be two or three shot at any time. They are awful! In expert mode, these things aren't even close to this much of a pain, my goodness! Now, I understand, you pillar haters out there. Now, I was about to fight Duke Fishron since I got the Vortex Beater, but I thought I might as well take down the Stardust Pillar to get the Stardust Dragon. This pillar also turned out to be the weirdest pillar too. You can technically farm the Stardust Pillar if you destroy the big cells and allow the little cells it splits off to to grow into full big ones again. Now, I never do this since it feels a little too cheesy for me, but the problem is several star cells chased me and despite my best efforts, I wasn't actually able to kill them fast enough. So they kept on regenerating and I ended up accidentally cheesing the pillar. I eventually tried the flamethrower to clear them out and that actually did the job a lot better than the vortex beater. But whatever, the stardust pillar was down and I got the dragon. Now that I had pillar gear, Duke Fishron was going to be a cinch. See, I don't know how to dodge it. I, I really don't. I don't know what to do. I am very much at a loss. I honestly have no idea if Duke has an actual pattern during that last phase. And yes, I've been playing this game since before Duke Fishron even existed. But I usually play in expert mode, where usually you only need a couple of dodges in that last phase, so I've never really felt a need to count its movements or really try to read it in any real way, relying mostly on instinct or quick reactions to dodge. Now in this run, I have been trying to count its dashes or detect some kind of pattern, but mid-fight, I found it really hard to pay that much attention to its movements, especially since he's next to invisible for most of the time. 
I was kind of convinced that there was no actual pattern and that the way that he moved around was based off of your distance from him. So he would teleport behind you once you got a certain distance away from him. That's that's what I thought. But then Alper from chat spilled the beans on Fishron's actual pattern. With this knowledge nugget, I managed to beat Fishron with almost no problem at all. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Type W Alper in the comments. He deserves it. I would never have beaten Duke Fishron without this knowledge. Also, I got Fishron wings. I've never really understood the hype behind them, and I have terrible RNG, so I almost never get them naturally, so I never bother even trying to farm for them. But wow, these wings are fantastic. I started fighting Empress of Light, and I was blown away. These things are spec. Spectacular, though not good enough for me to actually win the fight. I did another fight and lost. Then I made and put down some asphalt since Chad actually told me that Empress could be fought outside the hollow biome. I didn't know this. Again, I've only fought her maybe once outside of journey mode and I don't pay attention to these things, okay? <laughs> it's also been a very long time since I used the asphalt strat, so that was fun. Now I think the asphalt helped, but I lost to Empress anyways, though I did forget to use my potions. I was now out of prismatic lace wings, and although I wanted to keep fighting Empress, the remaining pillar prevented me from sleeping to the proper time for the lace wings to spawn, and I thought I'd just fight Moonlord and see what happens. I didn't expect to win, so I figured I'd remove the event so I could sleep. After all, in my last several runs, Moonlord has proven a lot more difficult than um, he should be. I've been doing very poorly against him recently. But then, he spawned. And the pro label I gave myself after beating Hardcore on Expert Difficulty felt validated since I defeated Master Mode Moonlord first try. Some of you sweaty Terrarians out there may say that he's easy, but in my last two or three runs, it took me about five tries each to win. So to me, this felt incredible. Although it also means that Empress is the new end game boss and I guess she might as well be since she's proven very difficult for me to handle. I even got the SDMG from Moonlord and made some Luminite bullets, so this should be easy, right? It took forever for me to get the gosh darn lace wings, but I was finally able to fight Empress one last time. At the start of the video, I told you that by the end, I'd convince you that Medium Core is worse than Hardcore, and you can let me know whether or not you've been convinced. Sure, in Hardcore, you can only die once, in which case this run would have been done several times over. But instead of resetting, I was stuck spending hours of my life trying to get my gear and was constantly fearful of being softlocked. The mentality of this not being hardcore led me to treating it with kids gloves as opposed to the gravity it deserved. And in the end, it turned into more of a problem of me trying to figure out master mode as opposed to navigating medium core. I would say it was a fun experience, but it was pain through and through. The rush I felt from defeating hardcore was exhilarating. But once medium core was over, I just felt relief that I didn't have to deal with it anymore. It didn't feel like conquering some great challenge, but rather ending an arbitrary nuisance. This was my first medium core run, and after this whole thing, it will be my last. Probably. Unless this video gets 20,000 likes, so yeah, good luck with that one.